Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to another Sims 4 house building video. Today I thought I would build a bunch of townhouses. This is something that I've been wanting to do uh, in The Sims 4 for a very long time. I've even started it many times, but I just didn't feel like it was going how I wanted it to. Like, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've tried to do this project multiple times. It wasn't going right. This time it appears to have gone correctly. And yes, this is part one of two parts, mainly because... This took a super long time. I spent all evening doing it about five to six hours or so in total. Uh, and it just took a whole lot of time. It took a whole lot of time. So it really, in two parts is ideal. Because in, if I just did this in one part, it was going to be like an hour long video. And I feel like that's a little long to sit down and watch a speed build. So I thought I'd split it up in two. The first half is obviously all the building and the furnishing of the stores. Yes, there are retail spaces so you can either use this lot as a residential property or a retail property. Obviously, you can't use it as both because The Sims 4 doesn't let you do that. Hopefully, it will in the future, but right now it does not, which is unfortunate. But yeah, so in this, this part, we're going to do all the stores. And in the second part, we're going to furnish all of the townhouse apartments that we have in here. And hopefully, one day, we will be able to have apartments in The Sims 4, like they were in The Sims 2. And hopefully, we'll be able to have stores on the same lot as a resi residential lot, like we did in The Sims 2. So, essentially, that would allow us to have, you know, these four apartments above three stores, which would be awesome if they allow us to do that. Uh, but right now, obviously, they don't. So you can either use it as one house or you could still you, you could use it as multiple stores, technically, because you still have those different spaces. And this house, yeah, this this house slash retail space is ready for the Sims 4 dine out expansion pack because it does have a restaurant in it. Obviously, I don't have any of the restaurant components yet, but as the game comes out, you know, next week, uh, that'll be easy to add in. I, I don't know what the items will be, but there's definitely like a kitchen, uh, special kitchen item, I think, and maybe like a, a podium for the hostess or whatever. Uh, so that will that will be usable. So you could use this as a restaurant venue, which would be sweet. But anyway, let's go to talking about what I'm doing right now. So I've got these four different apartment or townhouse building shapes going on here. Uh, two of them are three squares wide and the other two are four squares wide. So you may be thinking, those are pretty, they're pretty thin. Uh, but yeah, that's the point. That's that's part of the that's part of the fun, I think, and part of the charm that I got out of doing this was that we get these su super thin houses. I guess kind of like Amsterdam style-ish or... I don't know. I think I think that's where they have the super thin apartment. I mean, you guys would know uh, from Amsterdam slash the Netherlands. You guys would know. Uh, so let me know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they have the, the super thin sort of townhouses there. Anyway, so that's kind of I wanted to do. I wanted to do something like this for a while, but the problem is, uh, like I said, when I tried to do it before, it just wasn't going right, and I just didn't like the look. But this one, I don't know. I just I just went for it. I thought, you know what? I'm going to take my own advice here. I don't do that rarely, but I'm going to do it. My, I, I had a piece of advice on my other my other channel, uh, on the Flabberleaky channel, in a Planet Coaster uh, Let's Build kind of video, or a speed build of a coaster video, which you should check out if you like uh, creative-based uh, construction, because in that, I'm building a coaster, and then around the coaster, I'm building a building that the coaster goes through, and there's like a little themed town inside of the coaster. So you should check that out if, you, if you're if you interested in that, because I think if you enjoy house building videos, you'll definitely enjoy that too. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of cross promotion there. But anyway, in that video, I said, um, when you want to build something, no matter what it is, if it's in Planet Coaster or if it's in The Sims, and you you don't think you're very good at building for whatever reason, it's not that hard. It just takes practice. Uh, obviously, at the beginning, it will be hard, but once you practice, you'll definitely get better. And, and the piece of advice I said was just start with a basic shape. So start with like a box and then keep adding on to it until it starts to look like something else. And that's exactly what I've done with this, for example. Like this building is literally a box. The entire thing is just a box. There's not even any fancy shapes on this building. It is literally just a big rectangle. And then all the detail comes from the bits that I'm adding on to it. So I'm adding on the windows, I'm adding on the awnings. I've got those little balconies up there as well. It's just, this is literally just a rectangle. But the interesting components of it come from what I'm adding on to it. And that I, that's that's sort of where I went with this. Because last, when I, I've been trying to do these uh, sort of townhouse builds, I've been trying to make them all different shapes, trying to have all these little bits popping out and having different heights and different, you know, 
one would be closer to the road, one would be further back, one would be, you know, one would have a basement or something, one wouldn't. Like, I was trying to do all this stuff, which is all well and good, and that can look really good. But every time I was doing that, I felt like it was getting too complicated, because once you start doing all the other bits on it, it got really, really messy. Um, so I stripped it back, went back to basics. This is literally a rectangle divided up into three and four square uh, tiled buildings. Now, down the bottom, I've set up the stores. We have one three tile square store, one four st uh, tile square store. And then the last one, which is the restaurant, is actually two buildings that are put together. So I imagined a scenario where, you know, like the whoever owns one of those stores decided to buy out the one next door so they could expand their business. So they have the two buildings that they can play around in that retail space. So you get a nice little restaurant down there. Uh, it's even equipped with bathrooms and a kitchen uh, and all the kind of stuff that you would need to run a restaurant. Well, at least what I assume you need to run a restaurant. We'll find out uh, next week. Oh, actually, no, we'll find out like tomorrow or today. I don't know. Whenever this video goes up, they're going to do a live stream on Dine Out <laughs> tomorrow from when I'm recording this. Uh, actually 25 hours from right now when I'm recording this. Um, so we'll find out then, but I assume you'll probably, it'll probably be like a special stove or something and like a podium, kind of like how it's been in previous games or I don't know, we'll find out. Um, anyway, so going up and making the facade something a little bit more interesting. Uh, obviously each of the buildings, I wanted them to have a different texture, a different color. Uh, we obviously, we do have three brick buildings and the other, the sort of white one, uh, is, there's the one that I've, that felt would be really fancy. That's the fancy building. It's got like these huge white uh, stone uh, sort of blocks that it's constructed out of. So, you know, it's real heavy duty kind of buildings that these big uh, fancy windows that are big arches and all that. And there's little balcony. That's the really fancy place. And I do have a really scummy, uh, scummy uh, building in here as well. See if you can guess which one it is at the end of this video. You might even be able to guess right now which the scummy building is, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. It might come as a bit of a shock. It's not the white building though, because as I said, that's the uh, that's the fancy one. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so playing around, I the, the the thing is, so the second level here, not the ground floor, but the second level is the sort of medium wall height. Uh, so those walls are taller than all the other levels, and I really like that because it gave me a lot to play with on those levels. But it also made it really hard to fit in doors and windows of the same height and try to get it all to match together and work properly. And it was it was kind of hard. Um, so you'll, you'll, you will definitely see a lot of me playing around with windows and a lot of me playing around with doors just to try and get them to work how I want them to. As you can see right now, I'm having that exact issue where I can't really get it to work. So what I did on this one is I used a regular sized window, put some flowers below it and made it look a little bit more interesting than it would otherwise. Uh, like I said, this building is simply just a rectangle with me adding stuff onto it until it looks more interesting, such as adding this awning. Uh, the reason I didn't add a normal awning to this building is, you may have seen earlier, I was struggling trying to get one that fits because the awnings that come in the game are three tiles wide or two tiles wide. And putting two of the two tile awnings next to each other looked really weird. And putting the three tile ones over each other didn't look good. So instead I just use an actual roof piece and that works just fine. Now, of course, because these are townhouses, I decided to add a fire escape. Uh, obviously, it won't function as a fire escape, but your sims could use it. But I have, in some of the builds, I did actually block off a few of the doors because it is a fire escape in, in real life. Uh, you tend to just put stuff in front of them, let's be honest. Uh, you're supposed to keep them clear, but you know. In one of them, there's like a chair in front of it and that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, so I put those on the side, not well, not only because it looks a little bit interesting and it is semi-realistic, but it it... Because it is just a big rectangle and the side of the building is completely flat, there's not even any windows on the side. I didn't put any windows on the side because realistically, you would have, you know, another set of townhouses next to this, right? And that would be an alleyway. And uh, you sometimes, there are windows in alleyways, I know that, but a lot of the time, I, I was imagining this as a really, really small alleyway and the building was right next to it and there, there wasn't any windows in there. Of course, I could have put some in there and of course, you know, but I didn't. That was my decision. So we put on the fire escape and I put in some uh, gutters for downpiping and that. And now for the super fancy building, I thought they had a similar idea to the guys downstairs. They they decided to buy out the rooftop of the building next door to expand their sort of rooftop uh, atmosphere. So they get a huge patio up the top and get beautiful views uh, all around. So that's pretty cool. I could have... Uh, no, I, I was going to say, I could have expanded the building and given them a huge room up the top, but I didn't really want to do that. I think I think it's nice having the building still be that small, but you just have a nice big balcony that sort of opens up and that's that's your space that you can do whatever you want with, which I think is pretty cool. Um, 
but yeah, so we're sort of getting like the, the front of the building now, the front of the structure is starting to really take shape and that's kind of what it's going to be. And right here is before I've decided that I was actually going to add a car park. Now, hopefully we get cars in The Sims 4, you know, like we had in The Sims 2. That's literally the catchphrase of this video, like we had in The Sims 2. We had cars, we had apartments, we had open for business on your home property, uh, all that kind of stuff in The Sims 2. Don't have it in The Sims 4. Uh, but yeah, I decided that because, well, a couple of reasons. Because uh, a we have these we have these gardens, but they're on the lower floor, and the lower floors, as you may remember, are the retail spaces. So the houses don't even have the garden space. So I was like, that doesn't really make much sense. So <laughs> I was like, okay. And then the second reason is because they would all have to have this weird balcony sticking over the top. I know mean, I could have put stairs sort of going down to the garden, but I thought that'd be a bit weird. So I was like, you know what? No, let's just raise the whole thing up. Let's get like a, I guess, quote unquote, underground garage. Obviously, there's no terrain tools. Like we can't change the terrain like we could in The Sims 2. Um, but you could imagine that the, the ground level is at that height and that garage is sort of underground or that you would have a complex of loads of buildings and that would be the grass in the middle over the top of the car park. And at least that's how I was sort of envisaging it. Uh, if we could put a bunch of properties together, I, you know, I could imagine it all sort of working together. You'd have this car park in the middle for all of them and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we can only hope that we get terrain tools one of these days. If I can say, one of the major things that I always come back to that I'm really missing uh, from any previous Sims game, yeah, like like all of them, all the other Sims games have terrain tools. That's one thing that really annoys me. Like, I know Sims 3 had, like, the color, the, the color picker and all that, but not all the other ones did. Like, but this is... It's really weird. It is really weird that there's no way to make a hill in The Sims 4. Like, just think about that. I mean, loads of games have that. Not The Sims 4, though. Planet Coaster has an amazing terrain tool. In Planet Coaster, it's voxel-based. So think, my, think like Minecraft. You know how you can build a tunnel and then turn that into a cave? And it's all like that. Uh, that's basically what Planet Coaster is, but on, you know, not in blocks. It's like, it's just like... Uh, in I, whatever you want really it's just a freeform terrain you can dig a tunnel uh, make a floating island uh, all sort of you know voxel based and you make this awesome terrain and then there's the sims 4 where everything is perpetually flat and it never changes like in the sims 2 uh, count how many times i've said that in this video that'll be interesting but anyway, so here I was, I, I'm doing the garage here. I was trying to make like a little hallway uh, that you would enter the garage for the bin area, but there wasn't actually enough room because as you saw when I put that wall in, if you looked at it, realistically, the cars would have no way of getting out. At least with the uh, sort of space I have now, the cars, you could imagine them actually being able to turn out and reverse into that area just fine. So I just left it as sort of an open space. But anyway, we're going over to the retail stores now. Uh, and uh, the first one I'm doing is the little restaurant slash, I guess bistro it could even be. Uh, you're just getting all these little outdoor tables all really close together. Don't know if all of those chairs are strictly usable. But in any case, I think it looks pretty awesome. So I I think I'm okay with it. Uh, we're kind of just shoving them all in and you get this... I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. But tables and chairs with umbrellas make, a, like, they make it feel so much more alive than just not being there or even just if you had a table without the umbrella the umbrellas make it guys the umbrellas make it that's something that sims 4 does have is umbrella tables it's beautiful <laughs> it, it works anyway so on the inside of this restaurant you can see that i have those two pillars now i thought that would be a kind of cool idea because originally these were two different buildings so it was like they were able to knock down the wall, but they still had to have some structural support in there. So they put in these two columns, you know, to hold up the building above. That was my thinking behind it. And I thought I added a nice sort of interesting architectural element to the to the build. Like that's where the building used to be. They've knocked through the wall, but you know, they still they still need to be there to hold everything up. Otherwise, it's going to be bad. Uh, and also, yeah, it's created that interesting element to sort of place items around and make something a little bit different. But I went for a kind of romantic, I don't know, no, nah, not really a romantic vibe, but a sort of a deep, rich, oh, I guess, I guess it's, the, the lighting isn't romantic, but I feel like the colors of the wood, like the dark woods and the red kind of lend toward a romantic kind of restaurant vibe. But at the same time, the lighting is most certainly not, it's, it's too bright to be romantic, but you know, 
in any case, that's kind of what I'm going... But anyway, I mean, you could easily redecorate this to whatever you wanted it to be, especially when Dine Out comes out and we can have actual restaurants. I, I, I definitely... I'm personally going to turn this into a proper working restaurant. Uh, I might even change it. I don't know. Um, maybe I might even change the venues next door to other restaurants. I don't know if it'd be possible to have... Because obviously, I assume the way it's going to work is one restaurant per lot, right? But I assume you could probably have, like some weird i don't i don't even know what they're having in there like i think you could do like a rest i think there's like the in wall restaurant things i think i've seen i don't know i don't know but what depending on what type of restaurants there are you could probably make it work in some weird way to take advantage of the different spaces and see if that's possible i'd be interesting to experiment around with i'm definitely going to do it and we'll see how it goes um now it'd be great if i could see what i was talking about right now because unfortunately my preview has gone black, so I don't know what's happening. And um, this is not great because I uh, I recorded this entire video in 4K resolution, uh, which is great and all. Uh, but when you edit 4K footage and then speed it up six times its normal speed and try to preview it back at 60 frames a second at six times speed at 4K, uh, it turns out that a computer kind of struggles to do that. And it... <laughs> Um, well, I'm playing. I'm pl trying to play it back at one eighth resolution, so it'd be. Yeah, it's a pretty small resolution. It should work, but it's it's not having a good time. So I don't really know what's going on. Um, but anyway, I'll try to talk about other things. Uh, still in the restaurant though, so that's good. Getting lots of mirrors. I, I, yeah, okay. I, it's kind of flashing on and off now, so I can every so often see what's happening. Getting a lot of mirrors in there. I put those in because I thought it would. Uh, because well, especially all of these buildings are such small spaces. Um, Chucking in a lot of mirrors makes them feel a lot bigger. Especially, you see this a lot if you if you ever go to restaurants that are fairly small. You will chuck up, you know, mirrors on the wall, and even though you know in your mind that this is a small place, just seeing the mirror opens up the space so much more. Mirrors and windows make places look so much bigger than they are. Uh, and if you have those two things, you have a mansion. Well, you don't, but you have something that looks a little bit more... Because if you go into a room that has no windows and just a door to get into it, and it's just... That's it. It's so small. It's so claustrophobic. You're just brightening it up with a window or some mirrors or... Just like that. It just makes it so much nicer. And uh, I've, I've even, I don't even have the little flashing preview anymore. Now it's just completely black again. I don't know what's happening. Um, but I will... I don't, I don't know if we're up to it, but I'll talk about the next uh, building over, which is... Uh, the I think it's in the fancy building. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in there because I, I you can just do random item stores. You could do like electronic stores and that kind of stuff. And I was like, no, you know, no, you know what? Let's do a spa. Let's like do a spa from Spa Day. So we got this little register out front. You walk into this nice tranquil environment. Yes, a register, some nice lighting, ambient lighting and all that. Goes down this little hallway and then you have like a massage table room. And then you have like the... Uh, I don't even know the, like the massage chair. I don't even I don't even know if those things work in those spaces I put them in. But for the atmosphere and just you know completeness, I wanted to put them in there. It was a small space, but I think it was kind of cool. And then of course at the back we've shoved in. Uh, I don't. I really wish if I knew what was happening right now. But at the back of it I've shoved in a, a sauna because uh, you can't have a spa without a sauna, right? I was trying to figure out the best way to fit it in because I could either go like sideways or or sort of lengthways but it neither way did it really work particularly well because lengthways it took up a lot of room sideways it was t like you couldn't get into it so I was like all right here's what I'll do I'll borrow a little bit of space from the guys next door you know we've we've had we've made a deal they allowed us to knock through the wall a little bit uh, just so we could get our hallway around so we can get into the sauna and uh, that's what that's what I did. That was the best way to sort of solve the issue. And then you have this nice spa in this fancy building. And I think it's pretty sweet. Right. So now what I've done uh, in that seamless transition is I actually just rendered out a preview so that it, uh, I can actually see what's happening now. Because uh, I pre-rendered it. So I'm playing it back and I can see what's going on. Good. Yeah. So this is the little uh, massage table room I was talking about. I got a little bit ahead of myself in the commentary, but I was pretty close. Uh, so we're just getting a little decorations there. Like I said, I have no idea if that's even usable or not. But, you know, it just adds into the whole illusion that, you know, this is like a little spa place. It's not too big. It's just a maybe a mom and pop run operation or something like that. 
And uh, I don't think I've mentioned it before, but you can see that we have all these stairwells going up to the apartments. Obviously, each building needs to have its own set of stairs, and they're sort of snuck in between the buildings. Uh, so there's one in the restaurant, you go through the front door and go straight up, and then there's the one next to uh, the spa. And then we also have uh, one on the other side of the restaurant, and then we have one on the... Uh, actually, the one in the next building is in a little bit of a different spot. As you can see, it's kind of in the middle, and we have the entrance from the side. And uh, the reason I did that is because if I put it at the front, then the store would only be two squares wide from the front. And that honestly seemed kind of ridiculous for a storefront to be only two squares wide. So I thought that I would shove it back a little bit. We're going to have an entrance from the side, no problems. And uh, so we're working on it now. And I created uh, that little office at the back, which is, uh, you know, just like the little office for the worker. So I decided to make this a bookstore because I thought that would probably be the easiest thing to decorate. Uh, I, I did toss up doing like a clothes store, but that's kind of hard because there's not really any clothing racks. It's like you have mannequins and then you can just get the like the default like in-game clothes dresses and that it's like i don't know the clothes store i don't think would have looked as good uh this one i kind of made it a little bit funky we had all these all these different styles of bookcases different colors of bookcases different size i already said sizes or maybe it said styles i don't know but we have all these different bookcases just being really funky sort of like that is pulled off like you know <laughs> pulled off the shelf get it <laughs> like they've just been pulled from anyway you know maybe like a garage sale or they've just picked it up from the dump because someone's chucked it out and we've just shoved it in the store and they put books on for sale. Uh, so that's kind of what that one is. Uh, just a cheap little store. So just obviously getting a few more details on the outside there. Uh, a few little signs around the place that sort of mark things a little bit better. I thought I'd have a little table here covered in books as well and uh, maybe a little chair to read in as well. You can sit down there, you can have a little read or maybe while you're waiting for someone at the register. And I've got a little TV that you could display, I don't know, like new sales or new stock or something. Uh, I don't know, whatever you wanted to put on there. Obviously it's a sim, so you can't put much, but you know, <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> so in the back room, we have like the little office. We're just getting like a little desk or something for, I don't know, the store owner. None of the other places have this, but I thought it would be a nice little addition because otherwise it would be a bit of a weird little nook for the store. So I thought it kind of made sense to make it like a little uh, office there. Of course, more books for the store because, you know, why not? Another little bookcase. But we pretty much finished the stores. I'm going to change things up a little bit. I actually deleted the, uh, the front table there and put a bar. Uh, just because that's kind of like marking the space for uh, dine out. Like I assume there'll be an item that will need a place. That's where you could put it. That's kind of what I was doing there. And I'm just doing a few more little details around the outside. But we're coming very close uh, to the end of part one. So in part two, like I said, we will furnish all of the houses. That's all four of them. Uh, and that does take a while. I think it's about like 30 minutes or something of pure furnishing. So get excited for that. Uh, I do have a lot of fun with those. There's like four, you know, four completely different places that have a different layout and different furniture. And it was, it was pretty fun, to be honest, because they're all really small. You know, two of them are only three squares wide and the other two are four squares wide. And we have to fit stairs in them. So it creates a really interesting sort of layout to muck around with. You have these really thin properties plus stairs and you have to fit rooms and bathrooms and, and hallways and all this kind of stuff. It was a really fun little, it was, it was practically a puzzle, you know, trying to put it all together. It was a bit of a puzzle and it was uh, something I had a lot of fun doing. And uh, I think I think you'll see it come across when we get to it. And apologies if I sound a bit weird. I don't know why I'm saying this at the end, but I do have a bit of a cold at the moment. My nose is a little bit stuffed up, so that might be why I sound a bit weird. If you're wondering that, if you're not, then ignore me saying that. But like I said earlier, if you do want to check out uh, videos similar to this on my other channel, uh, click the link down below to my other channel, Flabaliki, and you can check out my Planet Coaster stuff over there. I've done like shop, like a shopping street build. I've done coaster builds. I've done all this kind of cool stuff on the game. Very similar to this. So you, I think you will definitely enjoy it. You can download this house already in the description below as well. Uh, if you want to spoil the second half. There's also a bunch of screenshots over on my Facebook page where you can see this house right now. Or you can wait for part two, which will be coming very shortly. Because like I said, the house is already done. Uh, I just decided to cut this up into part one and part two. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time, and have an awesome day.